Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing great. I have missed you all so much and I'm so glad to be back. So I'm jumping right in with a summer top DIY and we're going to be using this men's shirt. It looks like a thick corduroy material, but I promise you it's so lightweight. She just knows her angles. She knows how to look thick for the gram, but she's really not that thick, okay? But it's super lightweight and this is a top we're going to be making. So there's a lot happening with this top. There's ruffles, there's a tie string there's a sharing and you know what it has most of all gorgeous it's just gorgeous and I love this top so much I love it to the extent I'm getting married in it so this is my wedding dress you are getting a reveal but jokes aside I really love this top it is quite a bit of time dedication to make this but it's super easy and I promise you if you want to look cute and have this added to your wardrobe sustainably it's going to be so worth it so without any further ado let's jump right in so first things first I'm going to seam rip off the pocket and to do this I'm using my handy dandy seam ripper this is so easy to do and once that was done I am going to straighten off the bottom so if your shirt already has a bottom that is straight you don't need to do this but I had to do this because the curve just doesn't work with my vibe so I drew a straight line and then I cut off the excess fabric and this line was not straight but we're just going to ignore that because we don't focus on mistakes okay let's just focus on the positive so now you're going to measure from the top of your bra and you're going to go all the way down up until the point you want your top to reach minus 10 and a half inches long vary this according to your preference and then you're going to add three inches to that measurement and this is because you need to account for all the ruffles that will be going into this so just make sure you add three inches so now I'm marking out 13 and a half inches that's how long my top is going to be and this was more than enough for me and if you're using a piece of fabric instead of working with a shirt just cut out a length that is double your bust size that should be enough to give you the fabric you need so now once I cut off that bit of fabric we're going to fold it in half and find the middle and we're doing this because we'll have a V that goes down the front so it's just easier when you know what goes where and you're not confused like in real life I never know what I'm doing half the time so when I have a guideline it just makes me feel more comfortable Comfortable. So once the midpoint was marked, there she is. And now we're going to move on to making the interfacing. So I'm taking my remaining shirt bit and on the breast side that didn't have the pocket, I'm going to cut out interfacing. So for my interfacing, I went with four inches wide and seven inches long. I do wish I'd made it a bit wider because my v-neck was suffocating up there. She barely had space to be herself. So I'd say cut out maybe six inches wide and seven inches long and that should be fine so once I had my measurements I'm just cutting out this rectangular bit and it's going to serve as my interfacing don't look too closely at her resume she will get the job done it's not like store-bought interfacing but she does a job okay so just let her be so now with my pieces of fabric as you can see I have my interfacing piece and I'm also finding the midpoint of it that way everything just matches up quite nicely and everything looks good so I marked my my midpoint after folding it in half and I made sure to really go back in because I wasn't sure if you guys could see this point but I wanted her to be clear and now with the interfacing upside down so the right sides are kissing I'm going to align those midpoints together and pin this interfacing in place that way she doesn't move about and think she's the boss I want her to know I'm in charge so after removing the middle pin I'm going down two and a half inches for my V and once once my two and a half inches was marked I cut it down and now I have a V point and now you're going to sew around the top edge and also overlock the raw edge all around this is to make sure your fabric doesn't fray on you so I'm using a zigzag stitch to overlock that raw edge if you have a serger do use your serger because you think you're better than us no I'm just salty my serger broke and it can be fixed and I'm so mad about that anyway with the edges overlocked it's time to sew your straight stitch and I'm going from one end to the other when I got to a corner point I just raised my presser foot turned the fabric around made sure she understood that I was in charge and she was working for me put the presser foot down and continued sewing my straight stitch so this is super simple to do and it attaches your V to your top and this is what the stitch looks like in case you're wondering where to sew and once that was done I snipped off the corners just to make it easier to turn 
this the right way out. I also snipped tiny slits in the seam allowance and this does the same thing. It just makes it easier to turn this the right way out and you don't have the bulky seam allowance. So once that was done, I'm now turning my fabric the right way out. She's going to look so gorgeous and she's going to be ready to party because things are opening up again and I don't know how I feel about that. I miss people, but I also really enjoy staying at home and having panorama as an excuse to stay home. Anyway, I poked out the corners using a chopstick just to make sure the corners were nice and sharp. And once that was done, I ironed down my V and decided this wasn't whole enough for me. So I did the same process all over again, deepened it to three and a quarter inches, and now we're ready to move on. So look at this cute iron I got off Amazon for $20. It is literally my new best friend. It's so cute and so handy. I love it. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking that raw edge at the top and folding it by maybe half an inch and ironing it down. And we do this because we don't want the raw edge fraying on us and ruining our entire top. So this extra step really does make all the difference. So just make sure you do this before you make your casing. So once all the raw edge was ironed down, I folded the fabric by one and a half inches and ironed it down. And this is going to be my casing. So I just made sure all the raw edge was tucked in, no one was disrespecting the elders and everyone is happy. And then I ironed the casing down just to make sure everything was nice and neat. And I know the ironing feels unnecessary, but it really does go a long way in making sure your casing is nice and even. So just make sure that your casing is not big at some bits and small at other bits. An uneven casing is not that great. So just take your time and iron down your casing. You will be so grateful you did. And you can use this as an excuse as to why you can't go out now that things are opening up again. You can just say, I'm ironing down my casing and no one will ask questions because they're afraid to find out what that means. So once the casing was ironed, I did pin along the bottom edge and I did this along the entire top edge. And now we're going to sew a straight stitch following the pins to create our casing. So this is a process, we're just getting started. So I'm going to sew along the pins. Make sure you take them out because they're always so pressed and bothered about your life. So just make sure you take them out of the way. Don't spill your secrets. Just let them be who they want to be out of your way. So they're just there to do a job. And once they're done, they're out. So I'm just doing a straight stitch all along the bottom edge. This is honestly so simple to do. And once you get to the end of your stitching, always, always backstitch at the beginning and at the end of your sewing, just to make sure your stitching doesn't unravel. So once the stitching was done, here's a casing sewn down. Well, we don't technically have a casing yet. We're creating it. So here's a first line of stitching. And now we're going to take a piece of elastic. So take the elastic you're going to use and I'm going to create a casing that fits that elastic perfectly. So do what you have to do to make sure this casing will be the right size for your elastic. And then you're just going to sew a line of stitching right above the stitching you just did. So I'm just making sure to show you exactly where I'll be stitching so that you don't get confused. And once we move on to the sewing machine, I will use the edge of my presser foot and align it with my line of stitching and this will give me the perfect casing size. So in case you're wondering, my elastic was slightly less than a quarter inch thick. So me following the first line of stitching by aligning the edge of my presser foot to it literally gave me the perfect casing. So you can do the same and just basically follow the first line of stitching just to make sure you have a perfect casing that will be there for you through thick and thin. So now once I was done, here's the casing, her bills are paid, her nails are done. She is a woman I aspire to be. She is literally perfect and I love her. So now I'm going to seam rip off the buttons and once I was done, I made sure to save them because I might need them to hold my life together because things are not going that great at the moment. So yeah, I have a lot of buttons but my life is still in shambles. So I'm now going to double hem the bottom raw edge. I don't care what you do, I don't care who you are, you have to hem your fabrics, especially if they fray on you. They're going to teach you a lesson if you don't put them in their place. So at the sewing machine to hem your fabric, you are going to take your fabric and fold it in once, then fold it in again, and then flatten everything, make sure everything looks good, and then sew your straight stitch. And you're basically going to do this throughout the entire 
entire bottom edge and this will make your garments look flawless and beautiful and professional so again just fold in your fabric twice make sure it's flat and sew your straight stitch you will keep repeating this until you get to the very end and I promise you it's super simple to do it just might take a few minutes but it will be so so worth it so here's what my hemmed edge looks like it's so gorgeous and on the outside she is still slaying you thought you could catch her slipping no ma'am okay she looks good so now we're going to measure the width of our breasticle so mine was seven and a half inches wide this is basically the size of your boob so you can go from the top of your bra to the very bottom and you're going to transfer this measurement onto your top so I'm marking from the very top make sure you don't start at the casing because you don't want this to sit awkwardly on your boobs and everyone's like you made that didn't you because it doesn't look that professional you want to trick people that you can actually do something okay that you have skills so just make Make sure you put a lot of effort into this so once I've marked out my seven and a half inches I'm just drawing a straight line to connect all the dots and this is because that line is going to be our guideline for the first line of sharing so it's just good if you have the line in place she just shows you what to do and everything looks nice and neat and as I said you don't want people thinking yep you made that we can tell okay <laughs> so now taking some elastic thread this is going to be what you'll use for sharing and you're going to hand wind your bobbin using this elastic thread if you use your sewing machine to wind your bobbin with elastic thread it just never gets it right so just get on the program and do it by using your hands just make sure it's not too loose or too tight you just have to be average girl and I think that's something I do very well so once the bobbin is relatively full I'm going to pop it back into its case and just like you would regular thread just follow the path and cut off the excess thread and then set your machine to the longest stitch length and this just makes sure you gather your fabric in half and then set your tension to four which is usually what I put my machine at most times and once you have those settings you are now ready to make the magic happen so to share make sure your fabric is the right side up and you're basically just going to push your fabric through and follow that line we just did and this is why the line is helpful you'll know where to go and where not to go and everything will look good so don't worry if you don't get sharing right on your first try you can actually try this on a scrap piece of fabric made of the same material but it should basically look something like this and the elastic thread just gathers your fabric and brings it in and now it's time to literally repeat this so many times that you will hate yourself so to do the next line I just line up my presser foot the first line of sharing I just did and I keep my eye on the presser foot make sure you backstitch by the way just because it's elastic thread doesn't mean you treat her special she gets the same treatment as everyone so now you're going to keep your eye on the press of it and basically push your fabric through let me tell you this fabric was such a breeze to share she was just saying the right things she knew how to make me feel and I loved the process of doing this so much but yeah basically keep your eye on the press of it and just match it up with the previous line of stitching I want you to look at her so much that after this she proposes to you because you guys have such a connection so you're just going to keep doing this follow the previous line of sharing to do your next line and another tip I'd give you to make sure this looks good is flatten the fabric as you go it's super easy for the fabric to bunch up but just make sure you're flattening this as much as you can as you sew and I promise you with practice you just get better at this I do have an in-depth tutorial on how to share so I will link it down below in case you want to check it out but I basically did this 11 times I have 11 lines of sharing and this is what they look like and on the inside you just have the elastic thread forming straight lines which is what creates the cinching in at the waist so now I'm going to seam rip off my hard work because I realized I couldn't close this off without sealing off the casing so I'm just marking one inch from the placket so from that line over there I'm marking one inch and this is going to enable me to seam rip off fabric but not too much so I placed a pin at the one inch mark because I wanted the pin to stop me in my tracks in case I was getting carried away seam ripping so I did this on both sides and now I'm going to seam rip up until I reach to the point the pin is so I did this off camera and this is a bit sad because it's always sad undoing your hard work but we definitely had to do this so once both sides were seam ripped it's now time to get rid of the pins they're no longer needed just like every other toxic friend in the trash they go we don't need toxic friends so now with my fabric the 
right side up I'm going to fold it in half and this is going to enable me to close up my top that way it goes all the way around so I'm just joining the right sides together and making sure they're aligned and then I'm going to pin right beside the button packets just to make sure the pin sits right I did do this along the entire length of my top and when I did this I made sure the button packet was going to be on the outside if that makes sense like I'm going to sew right along this edge and this is because I didn't want the button packet coming through her 15 seconds of fame were over and it was now time for her to take a back seat so now I'm just doing my straight stitch all along the pins I'm making sure to take them out as I go and you can see I do have quite a lot of space between the edge of the fabric and where I'm sewing and this is because I'm avoiding the button packet it will make sense in a moment so I cut off the excess fabric after everything was nice and sewn and you can see I am getting rid of almost the entire button packet and this is because I figured she's going to be bulky and complicate my life I'm already in a love triangle with my TV show so I didn't need to add one more person to that list and you're going to make sure to overlock that raw edge and then you are going to place down your casing remember what we undid it's time to redo it so make sure it's super flat and then you're going to do a stitch at the top and at the bottom to create your casing again and it will be as good as new so this is what my casing looks like on the inside she looks a bit bunched up but on the outside she looks good just like we all do in real life I cry myself to sleep at night do you know that no because I look good on the outside so now you're going to measure a piece of elastic around your bust and take this piece of elastic reduce it by one inch so that it fits nice and snug and you're going to take a hairpin and this is what I'm using to guide my elastic through the casing I did pin the other side of the elastic to my fabric using a safety pin just so she wouldn't move into my casing the house was not big enough for the two of them so one of us had to compromise so now I'm just guiding my elastic by using my hairpin and this was super easy to do it's just that my casing was a bit too snug so I did have to take my time doing this so just just make sure you're gathering the fabric evenly by making sure it doesn't bunch up too much at one point and this is so simple to do I promise you you will do this in literally minutes so once the hairpin comes out the other side she has really been through it okay so she needs some TLC so you're just going to get rid of her and give her some time to relax and you're going to replace her with a safety pin I did do this on both ends of the elastic and I did this because I didn't want my elastic disappearing into my casing when I was doing this I basically just shushed the hell out of my fabric and my elastic and this is to just make sure the fabric is evenly gathered so I did have to take her to some karate classes to just have her in tip-top shape and once I shushed her about she was now ready to go so now we're going to move on to making the string and I cut out a strip of fabric from my shirt this strip was 26 inches long and one inch wide and we're basically going to use it to create the impression that the elastic is not there it's just string all the way around so you're going to fold this in half and sew on one edge and it is inside out at the moment we are going to turn it the right way out and I'm just doing a straight stitch all the way from the top to the bottom nothing special she is going to blend in with everyone else except she's a lie because she doesn't really go inside the casing so now we're going to use a loop turner it has a hook on one end which enables you to grab your fabric and turn your strap the right way out and I'm just going to slide my strap through grab a bunch of fabric at the very end close my hook and then use this within itself to turn it the right way out I was very careful with this because my strap was quite thin and sometimes she gets lost in there so just be careful and you're just going to pull the fabric within itself and make sure the right side comes out so once that's done I decided I hadn't to use my iron enough I did iron this strap because I wanted her to look nice and neat and once that was done look at that she is gorgeous and she is ready for the ball so I am now going to divide this into two we're going to split it in half since it doesn't actually go in the casing it doesn't actually have to be that long so we're just creating a fake life here people so get with the program so now we have two strips of fabric and we're going to attach them to the ends of the elastic to fake that the string is coming out of the casing call me mastermind of the century so I just attached the ends of my elastic to the beginning of my ties and you're going to sew a zigzag stitch to join these bad boys together and this is basically going to create the impression that the fabric ties come out of your casing but really 
really it's the elastic doing all the hard work and the fabric ties just take all the credit just like me and all the group projects I do nothing but still get an A because I know the right people for a group project so now we're going to move on to making the sleeves if you've come this far this is so easy to do and I'm basically using my sleeves from my shirt so I'm just cutting one of them open and you're going to repeat this twice obviously because you have two sleeves and I'm also getting rid of the cuff because she was bulky she would ruin my piece I did not want her here no one wanted her here so we got rid of her and once she was at the door it's time to draw a straight line at the very top so this line was not straight but are any of my lines ever straight so we've just accepted this at this point and then I marked 10 inches so I wanted a sleeve that was four inches long but you're going to add six inches to account for the ruffles at the top and at the bottom so whatever length you want your final sleeve to be add six inches to that minus 10 inches so I drew a straight line everywhere I needed to and I'm cutting off the excess fabric that way I'm left with a sleeve that will be cute and ready to be worked on so I just cut along the lines I drew and once that was done I had a piece of sleeve that looked like this and now we're going to do the same thing we did for the bodice I'm going to fold in that raw edge by half an inch and once that half inch is folded I'm going to iron it down and this is to make sure the raw edge stays tucked in she doesn't come and talk to the police and just say stuff she shouldn't be saying so just making sure she goes away for life and you're going to do this along both the top and bottom edges and once that's done you're going to fold in your fabric by one and a half inches and this is to create your casing so we're essentially doing the same exact thing we did for the bodice piece and I pinned along the bottom edge of my casing and you're going to repeat this along the bottom edge of your sleeve as well just to make sure we have two casings that are ready to go and create cute ruffles once everything is said and done so here's your sleeve with both the top and bottom casings done and you're going to repeat this with your second sleeve because you have two hands if you have five I do not envy you because you need to do this five times so once you've done both sleeves it's time to sew along the pins and you're literally doing the same thing we did for the bodice piece you're going to sew a straight stitch along the pins and this is going to create your first line of stitching and then you're going to follow that up with a second line of stitching that will eventually create your casing so I did my straight stitch took out the pins as I went and once the straight stitch was done I made sure to align my presser foot with the first line of stitching to do the second line of stitching and this was a breeze to sew. So with your presser foot aligned with the first line of stitching you're just going to glide your fabric through and as long as you follow the first line with the presser foot the second line will look exactly the same it will be evenly spaced and it will look good. So here's the casing she's created she still got it she still looks gorgeous and I did this along both the top and the bottom of my sleeve so that I'd have two casings on each sleeve. I did cut off the excess fabric on either side because she was just going to get in my way and as I've made it clear I have no problem cutting off toxic people so once you've done that you're now going to measure a piece of elastic around the upper bit of your arm so where you want the top of your sleeve to sit just measure that bit to the piece of elastic and once you have that elastic you're going to attach one end to a safety pin and then attach the safety pin to your fabric and then weave a hairpin through the other end and use that to weave your elastic through your casing yes there's a lot of people involved in this it takes a whole community to create a top so just get with the program so I just used my hairpin to weave my elastic through my casing this was much much simpler to do than the previous threading of the elastic so if that was easy for you this will be easier so once the elastic comes out the other end get rid of the hairpin and pin the elastic bit to your fabric I did get rid of the safety pin as well and did the same thing I pinned the elastic to my fabric and this is to just make sure she doesn't move around and go behind my back to try steal my man sometimes you just have to put this girls in check so now I'm going to measure a piece of elastic around the bottom bit of my arm honestly you could use the same piece of elastic used at the top it's not that big of a difference but I wanted this to be snug so once I had my piece of elastic I pinned one end to the safety pin one end to the hairpin and then weaved my elastic through at this point you've weaved elastic so much you will be 
seeing elastic in your dreams. I play no role in that. I'm sorry. I've had my share of PTSD from elastic. Now you take the blame, okay? So once the elastic comes out the other end, again, you're going to make sure the hairpin comes out in one piece. She's been through a lot. So we're trying to take her slow. And once I got rid of her, she is now done for the day. She can retire and go to bed. I am going to place a pin on both ends to make sure the elastic stays put. And you're going to sew a zigzag stitch along the ends of the elastic to attach your elastic to your fabric. That way she doesn't move around when everything is nice and sewn. So here's a zigzag stitch. The elastic is super secure. She's about to get a mortgage with this fabric. That's how secure she is. So once all the elastic ends were sewn down, it's now time to mark the bottom. I didn't want to confuse this, hence why I marked it. And now with the sleeve the right side up, I'm going to fold it in half. That way I can close it up and everything just joins together and it becomes a sleeve. So make sure the edges are aligned and then pin them in place. Super easy to do, literally takes minutes. And once the entire edge of the sleeve is pinned down, you're going to repeat this exact process with a second sleeve and now you'll have two sleeves. So now it's time to sew along the pins to close up your sleeves, make sure they go around your arms and they're actually sleeves, not just pieces of fabric. And once the open edges have been sewn down and the raw edge overlocked, you will have something that looks like this and she is now ready to go, ready to be attached to your top. So here are my sleeves the right way out and I'm now going to attach them to my top. So taking my top, I'm going to find my side seam. So here is my side seam. It's actually the original side seam of the shirt, which I thought was really cool. And I'm going to find the side seam of my sleeve as well. And I'm going to align those seams together so that everything looks nice and neat. And no one knows I made this on my floor, crying, binge watching everything and being a mess. When I wear this top, I look fabulous. So I just spin along the seams and I'm going to do this on both sides so just make sure you sew a straight stitch to attach your sleeves to your top and once that's done the final thing to do is to knot off your ties at the ends just to make sure they don't fray on you and everyone in the family stays together. So I did cut off the excess fabric diagonally just to make the ties cute and once that was done you are finally done with your top and you are ready to wear it all summer to all the social events you're not going to go to. So I I'm personally still going to be wearing this in the house because I'm still not seeing people. I have a whole book of excuses as to why I can't go out. The panorama was just one of them. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed making this top with me and I hope you can make it for yourself too. I have to say, I think this is one of my favorite DIYs yet. I just love everything about it, the color, the style, just everything is so perfect and I love it so much. So I hope you do try to make one for yourself because I guarantee you, you can do this. Just be sure to set aside a thousand years of your life because you will definitely need that much time. Anyway, I love you guys so much and see you soon. Bye.